Hello students, today's lecture is on hypersensitivity reactions. Let us have a brief introduction. Hypersensitivity reactions are a set of undesirable reactions produced by the normal immune system. Hypersensitivity describes an abnormal or pathologic immune reaction that is caused by an immune response to repeated exposure to an antigen. Hypersensitivity diseases include autoimmune diseases in which immune responses are directed against self-antigens and diseases that result from uncontrolled or excessive responses to foreign antigens. Because these reactions tend to occur against antigens that cannot be escaped and because of positive feedback systems intrinsic to various aspects of the immune response, Hypersensitivity diseases tend to manifest as chronic problems. Hypersensitivity reactions occur at different times after coming into contact with offending antigens within a few minutes, minutes to hours, or after many hours. They are usually referred to as an overreaction of the immune system and these reactions may be damaging, uncomfortable, or occasionally fatal. Hypersensitivity reactions require a pre-sensitized state of the host. These reactions are antigen specific and occur after the immune system has been primed. The reactions are therefore mainly the result of antigen specific memory response and are therefore the effects of the adaptive immune system. Hypersensitivity reactions can be divided into four types as type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4, based on the mechanisms involved and time taken for the reaction. Hypersensitivity diseases have been grouped into four major categories based upon their underlying causes. These groups are immediate hypersensitivity, antibody-mediated hypersensitivity, immune complex-mediated hypersensitivity, cell-mediated hypersensitivity. Now coming to the type 1 hypersensitivity. Type 1 hypersensitivity is also known as immediate hypersensitivity or commonly as anaphylaxis. It has rapid onset. These allergic reactions are systematic or localized as in allergic dermatitis. For example, hives, wheel, and erythema reactions. The reaction is the result of an antigen cross-linking with a membrane-bound IgE antibody of a mast cell or basophil. Histamine, serotonin, dradikinin, and lipid mediators, for example, platelet activating factor, prostaglandins, and leukotrins, are released during the anaphylactic reaction. These substances have the potential to cause tissue damage. It usually has a widespread effect on the body. It is mediated by IgE, which is normally found in very small amounts and in the circulation has probably evolved to protect us against worm infestations. Structure of IgE is shown in figure 1 below. IgE is synthesized by plasma cells. Monomers of IgE consist of two heavy chains and two light chains with the heavy chain containing four IgE-like constant domains. The heavy chain in IgE is epsilon. All other immunoglobulins contain only three constant regions but IgE contains four constant regions. Allergic reactions can occur to normally harmless antigens such as pollen and foodstuffs and microbial antigens like fungi. Some individuals in the population are genetically predisposed to certain antigens by producing IgE to these antigens and are said to be atopic. Leukotrins, histamine, prostaglandins and platelet activating factor released from mast cells are key mediators of type 1 hypersensitivity. Now let us see the mechanism of IgE mediated hypersensitivity. 
Mechanism of IgE mediated hypersensitivity involves two phases. Phase 1 is sensitization phase. Here, B cell antigen receptors specific for the allergen bind, internalize, and present the antigen in the MSD class 2 molecules. Then, CD4 positive Th2 cells recognize the antigen presented by these B cells and induce class switching of antigen specific B cells. These T cells also secrete interleukin 4, which is important for B cell growth and differentiation. Now, coming to the second phase, effector phase. Mast cells and basophils have high affinity receptors for the FC region of IgE. IgE that are produced as a result of previous contact with antigen diffused throughout the body. These antibodies upon coming in contact with mast cells and basophils become bound to these cells. This does not have any effect on the mast cells directly until the specific antigen is reintroduced into the body and comes in contact with the mast cells bearing the IgE antibodies in sufficient numbers to cross-link the antibodies on the cell surface. When the specific antigen is reintroduced into the body and comes into contact with the mast cells bearing the IgE antibodies in sufficient numbers to cross-link the antibodies on the cell surface of the mast cells, immediately release granules which contain large amounts of pharmacologically active mediators. These mediators have a direct effect on nearby blood vessels causing vasodilation. For example, systemic release of histamine and other substances by mast cells can lead to severe vasodilation and vascular collapse resulting in life-threatening systemic anaphylactic reactions which require treatment epinephrine to restore blood pressure. Now coming to the type 2 hypersensitivity. Type 2 hypersensitivity is also known as cytotoxic hypersensitivity. Type 2 reactions involve antibody-mediated destruction of cells. Disease caused by this type of hypersensitivity often involve erythrocytes and self cells. IgG or IgM directed mainly to cellular antigens or surface autoantigens can cause damage through obscenization, lysis, or antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity. For example, hemolytic disease of the newborn. Children born to RHD negative mothers and RHD positive fathers may express RHD on their erythrocytes. Prior to pregnancy, the mother can become sensitized to RHD antigen through blood transfusion and during birth and especially at birth by the baby's RD positive erythrocytes coming into contact with the mother's immune system. Some pass across the placenta but most are released into the maternal circulation during placental shedding. Since the mother is RHD negative, her immune system responds to it as foreign antigen and makes antibodies. This is usually not a problem during the first pregnancy but in subsequent pregnancies, small amounts of erythrocytes passing across the placenta stimulate a memory response leading to specific anti-RHD antibody production. IgG pass across the placenta and bind to the fetal erythrocytes leading to the obscenization and lysis. This results in hemolytic anemia of the newborn if not prevented. Hemolytic disease of the newborn caused by RH incompatibility in subsequent pregnancy can be almost entirely prevented by administering antibodies against the RH antigen to the mother within 24 to 48 hours after the first delivery. These antibodies bind to any fetal red blood cells that enter the mother's circulation at the time of delivery and facilitate their clearance before B cell activation and ensuring memory cell production can take place. In subsequent pregnancy with an RH positive fetus, a mother who has been treated with the antibodies is likely to produce IgG and the RH antibodies. Thus, the fetus is protected from the damage that occurs when these antibodies cross the placenta. 
Now coming to the type 3 hypersensitivity. It is also known as immune complex mediated hypersensitivity. This type of hypersensitivity can be induced by microbial antigens, autoantigens and foreign serum components. Immune complex mediated hypersensitivity reactions involve circulating antigen antibody immune complexes that deposit in postcapillary venules with subsequent complement fixation. An immune response in the form of antibody production against a foreign substance is often mounted to remove any detrimental antigen from the host. In type 3 hypersensitivity overproduction of immunoglobulin G and IgM to a foreign can lead to the formation and deposition of excessive amounts of insoluble intermediate sized immune complexes which can be difficult to remove from various tissues by phagocytosis. This in turn may trigger classical complement activation leading to overproduction of other inflammatory mediators leading to the recruitment, activation and degranulation of peripheral blood, granulocytes such as basophils or an influx of marginating neutrophils to specific tissues such as the kidneys, lungs and joints culminating in damage. Much of the tissue damage is the result of complement activation leading to neutrophil chemotraction and release of lytic enzymes by degranulating neutrophil chemotraction and release of lytic enzymes by the degranulating neutrophils. Local deposition of immune complexes results in Arthur's reaction. Immune complexes in the skin directly trigger FC receptors and activate complement resulting in an acute inflammation response mediated through mast cells. Small immune complexes can also lodge in blood vessels and induce vasculitis or glomerulonephritis in kidney. Immune complexes can also cause systemic effects such as fever, weakness, arthritis and edema. Depending on the frequency of the exposure and route of entry, type 3 hypersensitivity reactions can develop over hours, weeks or years. Now let us see the type 4 hypersensitivity. Type 4 hypersensitivity is also known as delayed type hypersensitivity. This type of hypersensitivity takes 2 to 3 days to develop. This occurs from 24 hours after contact with an antigen Unlike the other types, it is not antibody mediated but rather it is type of cell mediated response. Type 4 hypersensitivity reactions develop when antigen activates sensitized delayed type hypersensitivity T cells. Activation of delayed type hypersensitivity TDTH cells by antigen on appropriate antigens presenting cells result in the secretion of various cytokines including interleukin 2 interferon gamma, macrophage inhibition factor, and tumor necrosis factor beta. These cytokines in turn draw macrophages into the area and activate them, promoting increased concentrations of lytic enzymes for more effective killing. When inappropriately activated, these reactions can cause severe tissue injury and fibrosis. There are two different types of reaction capable of causing tissue injury. The first, known as delayed type hypersensitivity, is mediated by CD positive helper T cells. The second, known as cell mediated cytotoxicity, is mediated by CD positive cytotoxic T cells, together with dendritic and macrophages and cytokines. Type of hypersensitivity also plays a role in several clinical situations where there is persistence of antigen which the immune system is unable to remove, leading to chronic inflammation. These reactions are inappropriate or excessive immune reactions that are mediated by specific subsets of CD positive helper T cells or by CD positive cytotoxic T cells. Type 4 hypersensitivity reaction form the basis of many common diseases ranging in severity from contact dermatitis to diseases such as type 1 diabetes and viral hepatitis. 
Skin contact with a number of small molecules can also result in delayed hypersensitivity. For example, contact sensitivity. Contact sensitivity may be mediated through Langerhans cells. It involves two phases sensitization phase and effective phase. In this case, reactive small molecules, heptans, come into contact with the skin, bind to self proteins, including those on Langerhans cells, and are internalized, processed, and presented by Langerhans cells to T cells. These proliferate to form clones of Th1 cells specific for heptan modified self peptide. When heptan is reintroduced, the modified self peptide is again presented on Langerhans cells in MHC class 2. Memory T cells eventually find and respond to these antigens by releasing cytokines which attract primarily Th1 cells and monocytes to this area and upregulate expression of adhesion molecules on endothelial cells that result in passage of Langerhans cells into the tissues. Now, let us see the conclusion. An immune response evokes a battery of effective molecules that act to remove antigen by various mechanisms. These effector molecules induce a subclinical localized inflammatory response that eliminates antigen without extensively damaging the host tissue. This inflammatory response can have deleterious effects resulting in significant tissue damage or even death. This inappropriate immune response is termed hypersensitivity or allergy. Hypersensitivity reactions may develop in the course of either humoral or cell-mediated responses. Hypersensitivity reactions can be divided into four types as type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4 based on the mechanisms involved and time taken for the reaction. The fourth type of hypersensitivity depends on reactions within the cell-mediated branch. These are initiated by TDTH cells and are referred to as delayed type hypersensitivity. Although DTH reactions provide an important line of defense against intracellular pathogens, they cause extensive tissue damage that is pathologic and hypersensitive.